Houston. It's 97.9 a Box. The Man Had a Morning Show. And we got some in- extremely talented ball-playing brothers in the city of H-Town. H-Town's on with Shaw Lewis and, of course, Brandon Johnson in the building. Good morning. <laughs> Rashad, I just got to know. Is all that money still in your pocket? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all y'all wanted to ask, too. Y'all know the brother made a lot of money. It was a lot of money. I ain't saying pocket. I'm counting his wallets, <laughs> but y'all see the money. It's posted on Google, man. It's, it's, in, it's, in, my, it's in an account. It's in my kids' trust fund. I'm it's, putting it's, it up. Is that a kids. lot of pressure? This is the truth. Here it is. It seems Sometimes it seems unfair. A little bit, mm-hmm. but I get it. That you can one day, your life is going in a in one direction and all of a sudden you get thrust upon you millions of dollars yes. and you cats here it is you 20 21 22 23 max and all of a sudden you millionaires right nobody trains you how to manage money right uh how to think about when you 23 you think whatever money you getting you getting it forever exactly. i know when Rashad first got his first man he wouldn't yeah. think he thinking i'm good for the rest of my life You're i'm not thinking about right. one day Rashad 40 that's not even a who cares? Right. I'm gonna be millionaire forever. How do you know, how do you learn to manage this load? And then you got to manage your friends, your family, yeah. because now your millions is really they millions. Mm-hmm. So they think they think all that ball playing you did and all the practice you did, they worthy of receiving everything that you did. So when you get twenty million, they got at least three apiece. Right. Because <laughs> I saw you play the L six, Rashad. Rashad, no, I ain't lying. I'm just telling no, the truth, man. I mean, how do you deal? with That's a lot of pressure you for a dude. It, I, honestly, I. I dealt with it by going through the experience of, of, of coming out of high school, going straight to the pros. I yep. didn't go to college. Yep. So That's right. I didn't, yeah, wasn't yeah. able to live on my own in dorm rooms and kind of wake yeah, up on my own right. and yeah. do a lot of different things. So I was kind of thrown into that world overnight. Um, but good thing I had a great mom that kind of grounded me before uh, mm-hmm. I went off and did everything. But I still, you know, it was a lot of speed bumps in the road. I'm a teenage kid off in Seattle, walking the gym. This is where I'm around grown men. So, you know, I had to kind of find my way. And I kind of sat back and watched everything to fit in. But you're going to make the mistakes of giving money away to friends, to family. You're going to spend money on jewelry, clothes, and stuff that <clears throat> stuff that you really don't need. And you learn that as the years go on. But, you know, I think you learn from your mistakes and by having, give, having that experience. Rashad, do you think that, I'm glad you mentioned that you went straight from school to doing what you was doing. Right. Should, you, should it be required that you spend some time in college? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I think if you have the talent to go and compete in the NBA and if you can stick in the NBA, a lot of these guys uh, back then before the rule change was, was making their name eligible for the draft and wasn't able to compete or mm-hmm. even be in the NBA. Then they have to go either overseas, go to China or go to the G League, and their career is over within two or three years. Yep. Um, if you can, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to say if, if kids can come out and compete. Uh, but if you can go to college and get a little bit of an education, there's not a whole bunch of use. It's not, you know, it's not a lot of. It's I'm not just a, being it's not a lot of LeBron James or Kobe Bryant right. out there. Uh, you was one of the whole, I mean, there's a, there's a small fraternity of UK. And I did still that. had to learn and 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 uh, get better as the years went on. My first year in the NBA, I sat on a bench, mm-hmm. so it wasn't like I jumped right into the league and was able to be uh, productive right away. Right. It was a learning experience for me, not only on the court but as well as off the court. Yeah. I got to talk about that first year real quick. Now Rashard is a lifelong. Rockets fan. <laughs> um, still a Rockets fan. Yeah, now yeah, I'm, yeah. And, and I know you came out of school, and the Rockets had a chance to draft you, and I think we, yeah. we drafted some sort of Slovakian player, which. Uh. <laughs> Milovojevic or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> How, were you upset as me that you weren't drafted? Yeah. Yeah. No. I was upset. I was, you know. It hurt my feelings, honestly, because I was a hometown kid. You know, my mom from here, my whole family. I wanted to be at home and play, but honestly, I think that was the best thing that could happen for me is to get away from home at a, as a teenager, go all the way to Seattle. I, it was able, f- it gave me a chance to focus in on the sport as well as getting better every year. Because I think if I stayed home as a teenager, I don't know if I would have played in the NBA for 17 years. But did you have to come back and beat the Rockets for two playoff series? That's I wanted to beat the Rockets every chance I got, you know? <laughs> especially when I came home and played them. But it was tough coming home. Me being being from here, you know, getting 50 tickets to the game for family and friends. <laughs> it was almost like my mind was in the crowd instead of being on the court. But wow. it, other than that, I, you know, I had a, I had a, I had a great career and I and I really enjoyed it. Is it kind of sad for you? There's no Seattle SuperSonics anymore. It is, but I know that they're working on it. And they'll, they'll be a team that real soon. Um, you know, Seattle has great fans, and they most definitely deserve a basketball team, and I'm sure they'll be that soon. <laughs> Rashad, know all the right answers. Yeah. You can, I can tell. <laughs> I, I, you can just tell that he's been so – he's done he's done press for so long. Yeah. He know all the right answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't going to 
he ain't gonna weave out of it at all. He know what lane to stay in there. Like, like, nah, bro, I'm a pro, dog. I'm a pro. Can't burn no bridges. Nah. Hey, I made it back up here working with 979. You never know. Let me tell you, it's the last place to go, bro. It's rough, homie. Oh, man. Keep doing what you're doing because it's rough, man. It ain't pretty. Boys don't want to pay it right here. Man, they got to be paying. Bro, hey, man, you see the way we look up here, man? It's so ragged, homie. Come on, man. No, no. I, mean, I was a young kid listening to this show, and it's still wow. going, so I, I think this show is, is amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you. So do you ever miss playing? Well, I know you get to play for the big three, but right. NBA, when you first when you first decided to leave the game, how how did that weigh on you? You know what I'm saying? Because there comes a time in the day where you're like, man, I, I, I don't. Yeah. Because you, you don't, I don't think players <laughs> ever think about that final think day. you're going to play forever. Yeah. You know it. My career stopped off a knee injury. I was playing with the Miami Heat. Uh, we won a championship, and then uh, we came back and lost the Spurs that following year. And I had uh, tore my quad ten. I had tore my quad tendon in the finals against the Spurs. Uh, after that was the year was over. I became a free agent. I was signed with the Dallas Mavericks actually. Uh, uh, before I went to visit them and take a physical, and when I took my physical, that's when I found out I need to have surgery on my quad tendon. So uh, they took the contract back. I went into that summer, had the surgery. And they told me actually I can come back after All Star break if I'm if I'm ready to play and then you know we can get the, get my season going in. But I wasn't 100. percent I felt like I was gonna re-injure myself if I went out there and played at a high level. So I took that whole year off. Summer came around. Uh, some teams was calling for free agency, but it was teams that was kind of in rebuilding stages. You know, I was in a part of my career where I won a championship. Uh, I want to be in the playoffs to try to get back to winning another championship. But the teams that was calling wasn't basically uh, competing for a championship. So mm -hmm. I felt like uh, it was just be a waste of time for me to either go and sit on the bench and not play on a team that's not going to the playoffs. See, this, I want y'all to know, I hate to cut them off. <laughs> See, this is when you've made a lot of money <laughs> and you can weigh options. <laughs> this is what this, I got a ring, what? I got money. You know what? That team sucks, dog. You know what? <laughs> I don't need that extra five million. I'm gonna I'm gonna do, I'm, my investment's gonna get me that this year. No thanks, guys. And you know yeah. what, what? That's cool, Rashad. What really made that decision <laughs> Hurt my was, feelings over here. When, I, when I left Orlando <laughs> Magic from playing in the finals, you know, uh, losing to the Lakers in the finals and I got traded to the Washington Wizards and I experienced from going from a winning team to win a championship to a team that didn't care at all wow. you know a team that had got young guys coming in last minute getting late to practice and I felt and I felt depressed and mm. I didn't like because I'm a winner you know I put everything into the game and I love to win regardless if we're going to lose let's play hard let's lose playing hard and I felt like when I went to the Washington Wizards I almost wanted to quit and I'm not a quitter by any means necessary. So I there's kinda, atmospheres that are created oh that where, where yeah. there's a whole. How does that get created? I've never heard this before. It's just um, you know when you come from a winning organization and you go to an organization where I, when I was a rookie, Gary Payton was a guy. When I if I got to the gym late, Ooh. you know he would he would let guys know. You know we pay, we had to pay our rookie dues. He told every young guy you had to get to the gym an hour before practice. Make sure you get your weight lifting in, get your shots up, and you got to be on. But y'all listen to it. I'm a millionaire. I ain't listening to but nobody. But you got to be on the court 30 man, minutes before practice even million. start. So you know that's I'd how been, I would have been that guy. <laughs> that's how I was raised to work for everything <laughs> right, uh, right. I that, I, that, that I got. So when I went to a team and they had rookies coming in five minutes before practice started or didn't get there early to work on the game and to get better, how are you going to get better as a team if you're not trying to get better individually? So it was an atmosphere that I wasn't. A customer of, and I didn't like it at all. And I either wanted to get out of that situation, or I was ready to be quick done with basketball. Rashad, let me ask you this question too: When when we watch a, t a team play, how important is the coach to that team? Because oh, we like man. to we like to point the finger when the when the yeah. game go by. We oh. we blame we will blame the coach, <laughs> yeah, and then because yeah, we yeah. the first one, be like, man, ain't it time to get a new dude in there? The coach, we say that fast. So how how important really is the coach to the team? The coach is the most important piece of the team, I think. Uh, regardless of the talent you have on the floor, you have to have a good coach. And I've been a part of teams with a coach that didn't discipline the players, um, and, and we played that way. It showed on the court. And I've been a part of a team that held you accountable for every little mistake you did on and off the court, and we was a winning organization. And Nate McMillan is, is, a, is a prime example of that when I was with the Seattle Supersonics, mm -hmm. uh, as well as playing for Stan Van Gundy. Van Gundy is one of the best coaches I ever played of because – he was he disciplined his players and not only that he held everybody accountable and he's a winner and he and he teach the game the right way. If you have a coach that's kind of loose and don't hold your players accountable and let the stars get away with anything but gets on the younger guys, it's you know it'll trickle down the lineup and and, and things won't won't go as you as you would like. Sure, I got I've never talked to a coach, so I'm curious about this. How does a coach tell some kid that's worth a hundred uh, yeah. million bucks? 
what to do and what not to do. This guy, I mean, you got a court full of black millionaires. Yeah. How do you tell these guys, how do you make them work together and listen to you like you know it all and that you can lead them to the promised land? Right. That's when chemistry uh, and attitude make successful teams. If you don't have the chemistry, I don't care. Like when the Lakers had Gary Payton, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, you know, they had Carl oh, Malone yeah. and it didn't work out. Yeah. I don't know what their locker room was like, but you can have all the talent you have on the team, but if the chemistry is not there, it's not going to work out. Mm. Uh, when I played with the Miami Heat, you know, Ray Allen, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Shane Battier, uh, Udonis Haslam. God damn. Crazy. You know, uh, <laughs> y'all was cheating. I mean, that don't sound fair. <laughs> <fast. laughs> <Yeah. You laughs> that's going to work. As well. So the reason why I'm naming all these names is because we all was an all-star on another team or we all was – the man on a different team. Right. But when we all got to that team, we had roles we had to play, and everybody had a, had a role. I had to come off the bench. Ray Allen, the Hall of Famer, yes, mm -hmm. one of the best guys to ever do it, came off the bench. But everybody accepted their role, and we had good chemistry, and we lifted each other up, and we didn't. We wasn't bitter or about you getting more minutes than me or you getting more play, uh, points than me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't nothing like that. It was the chemistry meshed, and we was. Uh, I think we broke records that year. We were one of the best teams in the league, and we won a championship. Does that work? Can it work in reverse? You can – not saying that the coach is bad, but sometimes you have a team. And, like, it, sometimes, especially back in the past, there were certain players that looked like they led that team. Right. And I won't say any names, but this is a very high-power player that, you know, plays ball on the West Coast. Uh -huh. But it looked like a lot of times <laughs> certain players run their team uh -huh. and not the coach. Is, is, that, is that true? Is there any circumstances – in your mind well, when you think so, about it for any teams where there could nah, be a player that's... I would that's say the coach is still running the team because the coaches are the ones that set up the meetings in the morning. We go over the film session with the coach. We do the walkthrough, the shoot-arounds with the coaches. Uh, that player you're talking about is an intelligent player, and, and, the, and the main guys like your captain on the team, he's the floor general when we're out on the court. He's the ones that's going to correct the mistakes within the players. Uh, during the timeout is when the coach can correct the mistakes. But you got to have a guy that kind of knows the game inside out on the court that's almost kind of like a coach, almost like a player coach. And I think uh, it's really good to have one of those guys on the team because the coach can only tell you what to do. He can't go out there and run in between the lines true, with you. True, true. Uh, now you play, now you play with the big three. How is that? Yeah, man, I love the big three. You know, it's an amazing league. I didn't know. If, I wasn't sure if it was going to work at first. Job. You're right. A lot of people didn't know. I wasn't sure, but when you watch, I was. I enjoy watching it, but yeah. I'm like, how's this going to really work? And even when they called me and asked me if I wanted to join the big three, you know, I was kind of hesitant, like half court, three on three. <laughs> Are we going to be able to get people in the arena? You know, are people going to actually come and watch older guys play basketball? Uh, but, the, the you know, Ice Cube, I guess he's so hands-on with everything he do. He's always behind the scenes. He's there every weekend. Uh, he's there for everything. He makes he makes it work. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really commend the, the things he does. He's not just sit, one of those guys that sit back and let people go work for him. Mm -hmm. He's there hands-on with every single thing he does. It's fun to watch, man. I was like, I'm like, man, QB came. This is a great idea, but I don't yeah. know if it's going to work. You know, and I, it, here's what I liked about it, to see the guys. I think there's some players, I hate that the game seems to age people out yes. that still yeah. have so yeah. much left. But the game says, nope. You've reached that age now, so right. you got to get out. And 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 you, and like you, when you asked me earlier, you know, it's a little kind of I could say therapy for me going into retirement because uh, I went out with a knee injury, mm -hmm. and then I'm sitting at home. You know, obviously I'm raising my kids and doing the little things as a dad, but it still was missing. You know, I still love to compete. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and and when when the big three came along, it was like okay, it was like new energy because uh, I felt like I can still play basketball. I wasn't ready to retire yet. A knee right. injury took me out. So that this is my NBA now, you right. know, and I feel like my kids was young when I was playing. They didn't really understand what's going on, but now they can understand to see dad working out every day or see dad playing on TV, and they really get a kick out of it more than anything. So that's the that's a major reason why I was I wanted to continue to play in the Big Three because of my kids. Bring me in this year. Any of you guys could go back and play in the NBA if given the opportunity? I think some guys can. Like Joe Johnson uh, really tore the league up this year, and uh, he got an opportunity, went to Detroit, um, worked out with those guys. I actually was on the team, but I heard he had an injury, mm -hmm. and they released him. But it's definitely some talent in there that can go either not only get back into the NBA or maybe even get a job in China, go overseas and play. Um, it's a lot of cats that's – a lot of hidden talent uh, that's in their big three that we there's a platform for them to try to go off and play somewhere else. What if they're – I, I, I'm just big on this age thing. Is there a, num a number in your head where you think like somebody could not be able to play, or should it 100,000 you know be based I, uh, on ability? It's funny you say that because um, 
you know, there's some guys in there that's 37, 38 years old, and I have Mahmoud Abdul-Raouf, Chris Jackson, with mm -hmm. the LSU on my team, and he's 49, 50 years old. Right. And he's still, it's you know, I think right. it's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more about how you take care of your body, what kind of shape you stay in throughout the year. I mean, he expired me because um, – I don't know if I can play to the <laughs> <laughs> uh, But, I mean, for him to come out and tear the league up like he did, uh, I think it lets people know if you take care of yourself, you know, you can do anything. Yeah, and I say that, too, because I've watched Adrian Peterson when he plays football. And yeah. a lot of times these cats get aged out. I, I just hate that these games age out brothers that I think still got so much time yeah, right. left in them. Yeah. You know, and then they, I think this it plays on their mind like, well, I know I reached that number now, so I got to start – Somebody keep telling yeah, me that, yeah, you know, they keep tapping transition. on me like it's time for me to get out yeah. now. I'm like, nah, if I still can do it, I'm not going to leave until yeah. it's time for me to leave. All right, Rashad, I know you got some other stuff you want to talk about. You want, you did that, <laughs> you had great years, you made your money, you're still rich, you're living your best life. I get it, I get it, I get it. You ain't got to hold it up for everybody to see. But no, nah, you got some great stuff going on because you love to give back. You like to help out. Yeah. You got you got your academy. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, we have the uh, Rashard Lewis Academy. Um, actually, it started with uh, the twins, Elwood and Emmanuel, that started my... Uh, Sorry about that dumb question, where y'all twins? <laughs> Elwood and Sorry, Emmanuel, bro. that started my That's AU team. <laughs> it was when I was playing in the NBA, so I wasn't be able to be, you know, kind of back home, hands-on with, with the program that they did when I was uh, still playing. Uh, now that I'm done with the NBA and back home, I can kind of be a little bit behind the scenes, but more hands-on with, with the program, with, with the Rashard Lewis Academy. Uh, but not, but it's not just AU basketball. We're trying to start from the grassroots uh, up, from kids doing little league programs to, you know, skills and drills and training. Uh, we, we, we're coming up with an after-school program. There's a lot of things we're trying to do to give back to the community because I felt like when I was younger, I had an opportunity. Basketball took me out of Houston, out of the country. Uh, we're playing basketball, and that was from playing AU basketball with the Houston Hoops. And they gave me an opportunity, so I feel like it's my duty to give these kids in the city of Houston an opportunity that I had. Absolutely. Where can they go to get information? Can any, can any kid uh, join up and be a part of the academy? Yes. Uh, our IG page is Rashard, Instagram page is Rashard Lewis Academy as well as RashardLewis.com. Uh, All right. Twins, y'all good? RashardLewisAcademy.com. <laughs> <laughs> now, I really appreciate y'all coming up. Um, I appreciate your story. Brandon, it's an incredible story. Uh, can people reach out to you? How can they reach out to you? And for those that don't know, what is Brandon Johnson doing now? Uh, right now, man, I'm still playing ball. I'm coming back from an injury. So hopefully Rashad <laughs> hopefully, hopefully put me yeah, in the big three next year, man. So I ain't 49. Hey. <laughs> I told no, you but, have to come with it because I yo, am like yo, the owner yo. of my team. And that's the good thing about the big three. Ice yeah. Cube. Making the, it's a player's league, so each player they have one player that's an owner of their own, of their individual team. So if you want to be on the team, Brandon, yeah, I advise yeah, you get yeah, ready yeah. to hoop. Listen, <laughs> listen, it will be no Rashard Academy if I don't make this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm planning something out for the whole gym situation. <laughs> nah, man, that's that's like my my big goal right now. I'm training really hard to get back, man. My trainer, Ken, man, he's been working with me for a long time, man. So I'm looking forward to that, man. Brandon Johnson, Rashad Lewis, thank y'all so thank much you, for being a part of the show. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.